going live. Oh. So good evening, good evening, friendship. God bless you. Pray that everything is going as good as it can be this evening. Thankful for another opportunity. We are coming tonight, our power on Monday night. I know we are used to having prayer meeting and Bible study and our youth hour on a Monday night at seven o'clock. But tonight we are coming at another hour power. We have a national president, the president of the National Baptist Convention of America International Incorporated with us, Reverend Dr. Samuel Tolbert. In addition to that, we have Angie C., uh, who is also assisting us with uh, uh, another anchor. And uh, we are coming tonight to just bring a little bit of enlightenment into your living rooms and on your phones and on your tablets. Uh, this evening. Uh, I tell you, it's a blessing to have our president on tonight. He is a busy, busy, busy president, and uh, it is a great thing for him yeah. to share with us tonight in wake of what is transpiring, and we're going to uh, sure be blessed by him this evening as we interview him. Angie, see, go ahead and jump right in. Well, I just wanted to say hello, everybody, to the president. How are you over there? Doing great. Looking good over there. And I just, you know, I just wanted to jump in and just ask everybody, you know, how was your health? <laughs> How's your health? You know, th that that's what I, because I know, you know, when you go to the stores now, there, there's there's no more masks. Okay, they're all out. So I just started making my own. Okay. 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 So we got that. But all in all, with, with the pun intended, wait, I just wanted to ask. You you made your own mask? Yes. I, I made I made this. I, I made my own mask here. I actually made several because I do know how to sew. So we've made several masks here. And we're actually going to take these to um, our nurses. Okay. Doctors listen. and everybody that's on the front line. We're well, going, listen, I, I, we I have a few members who are, uh, are nurses in our church. So we have uh, Sister Tiara Jones and we have another nurse, Sister Linda Denson, 
Okay. Uh, along with others who work in the hospital, do you have enough for everybody? We have enough. What what I want to say, and this is no plug, I just want to thank my friends over at High Fashion because they they said that they had some um, some quality type of material that could be a subsidiary, if you will, of the real thing until we actually get some more mask in. And I would love to make sure that the nurses at your church, you know, get the mask that they actually need. So I'm going to be making masks. We're going to turn into a mask shop tonight. Well, I don't want you to just give for the nurses. We have a couple other members who are on the front lines too, who are working. Well, we, we got front line gear. We <laughs> We have frontline gear because we need it. We we really need it. We really need it. So I mean, shoot me the names that are I, you know, I'll make sure that I get someone over there um that could meet someone to actually get the mask. And um, and I hope that it'd be a blessing to the people that actually need it. Brother President, do, you, do we need to get a uh, brother president? Come on, brother. He got his mask on. Yes. <laughs> That's my ah! mask. That's my mask. <laughs> All right, Mr. President. Now, yes, listen, yes I, that is what I, I'm listen, talking about. That I had my I'm mask about. on this past Sunday. I had my mask on. My, yes, sir. They, my, they, they made sure I had my mask. I had and, it on. That's a good sir. thing. But you know what? To, to, I mean, a lot of people, you know, with us walking around and everything, you know, we're asking, uh, you know, everybody, you know, how's your health? And people are thinking that we're just talking about, you know, mentally, you know, emotionally, but how's your health spiritually? How's mm. your prayer life? Okay. You see, because right now doing, doing this pandemic, we need to up our prayer life. And so that is so very important. And I mean, you know, right now, it seems as if prayer is really all that we have. Well, pray and that we, but President, you want to talk a little bit about uh, what we're doing, I guess, nationally, maybe director, what you put in place uh, years ago, but how fitting it is always, but uh, even in this pandemic. You mind talking about that, President? Well, one of the things that uh, we have sought to do after developing our strategic plan, which talked about the making use of uh, the development of partners and technology, is now we are making use of those partners. We have a partner called D Free. Uh, they've been mm -hmm. talking to people about how to get out of debt, manage money, and all. But now they they are doing webinars, and uh, two webinars have been done since the pandemic struck. And one of them was dealing with uh, money and mortgages, both at church and at home, because some people, some churches are going to be facing uh, paying their mortgages. Mm -hmm. And so we've talked about ways that you can. Can, can do that by getting a forbearance and, and several things, moving it three months away, not having to pay the principal and the interest. Mm -hmm. uh, we've talked about stress and anxiety. Mm. A lot of what we worry about, we haven't evaluated what we worried about. We just worry. Uh, mm. so we sit down and make a list of things and start coming up with solutions on how to solve them in community and now mm. in the virtual community. Wow. Mm -hmm. And and you know what, President and Pastor, I hope I didn't interject too soon. It, it is it is so um, it's good that you brought that in because now you you you've already had this in place, and that's that's a wonderful thing. And, and like you say, we we need to sit down and we need to um, itemize the things that we're actually concerned about. So now with the actual um, programs that you have in place, how effect how effect effective, I'm sorry, do you think that they will be? I mean, because right now we have to rely on social media. We have to lie, rely on Facebook. We have to rely on the internet. So how effective do you think that the plan that you have in place is, is, it, is it really going to do its due diligence, if you will? Well, I, I think it will because even those who are not, uh, I guess, the social media literate yet they have people in their homes or in their neighborhood mm -hmm. that are doing it. But we've got a lot of, our, uh, I want to call them seasoned saints. Okay. Uh, uh, that are literate. They got smartphones, uh, iPads, and computers. If not, they know someone who has one uh, right in, home, in the home with them. And so 
gives us a time for us to make use of what we have. I got a member that had a smartphone. She hadn't been doing anything with it, but making phone calls. Yes. And now she's, she's sitting at home now, can't go around because we own lockdown and she's learning how to operate her phone. Someone else is teaching her how to do it. Mm -hmm. So it's a project and I'd like to admonish uh, people in our member churches to help those who don't know how to use their smartphones mm -hmm. to learn how to use them and make, uh, get the maximum uses out of them at this time. And, and, yeah. and that's good because now you said something and we were, you know, there were so many pawns that were rolling around. We're all on lockdown. So that's you don't what, have a spin number, now's the time for you to get in. <laughs> but, but guess what? Tonight I'm able to be with Friendship Missionary Baptist Church in Houston and yes. be in the stalls. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for, you know, the Zoom or whatever, the, the use of, of, of technology. Yes. And, and, uh, and you seriously, if you're hold doing- on. Hold on, I got a question for President. President, yes. uh, we talk about Blackberries and Apple and, and, and Draw. <laughs> what, what, what's your preference, President? Well, if they would give me some royalties, I might say it, but <laughs> I'm on the, I, I use the iPhone right now. I've been let using me, those for Apple products. Let's see your iPhone, President. Let's look, where is it? It is, it's right here. <laughs> there it is. See, pre, pre say, listen, I'm not saying nothing without getting the bag. I gotta get yeah. to the church and, and you, but, yeah. I mean, right. and, and, and you know what? It, it is so good that you said that. And I mean, this is the time now for us to actually come up and we can actually implement some of the things because I mean, I have an iPhone and I have an Android and there are some, some tutorials, if you will, that my daughter is actually teaching me such a, you know, even, even like Zoom. But pastor, I wanna throw a question your way, um, if you don't mind. So, you know, the president told us how effective you know, the the uh, programs that they actually placed in, um, they had in place. So now how efficient, how efficient do you think that the church is actually going to be? Because you, we're not only dealing with the average church person, we're dealing with people who, who, you know, haven't even, you know, turned to church in a while. So how efficient do you think it's gonna be? Well, for some people, they may be hearing the gospel for the first time. Mm. Uh, and so it may be foreign to them, uh, but hopefully they'll keep watching. I noticed yesterday uh, for our sunrise service, we started at 6 a.m. Central Standard Time, mm. and I'm here from my house, and we had somebody in Iraq, two people in Poland, and three viewers in, wow. uh, uh, I think it was Italy. Mm -hmm. So, of course, we're moving into areas we had not been uh, in before, you know, at the tomb, uh, the, the resurrection story, he told yes. them to go tell my disciples and Peter, you know, that I've risen and I won't, that, I yeah. won't meet with them. And so now we have an opportunity to every day broadcast the resurrection message. Wow. And that, that, that's a beautiful, that is a beautiful thing because you, you, you said, and we're going to come back to that because now you have reached the masses now. And so, yeah. you know, we want to make sure, and we'll put a footnote right there um, about, you know, reaching people that, that we didn't even think that we could actually reach on a daily basis. So now, Pastor, uh, um, I want to ask you, you know, with everything that we have, how efficient do you think we're going to be in our efforts? Well... I think that we are efficient. Uh, that has to be gauged by the individual pastor. That's that's my take on it, uh, okay. because I think like with different administration styles, uh, I, I, we always get into trouble when we start comparing uh, church to church. Why? Uh, because uh, especially uh, those who are Baptists, because uh, each administration has uh, the wherewithal to do what they so desire. So we get in trouble. We give ourselves, I think, a, a huge headache when we compare uh, the, uh, with the number of people who are in the pews, if you would. Wow. But not everybody's preaching to 10 or less. <laughs> you understand? That just, my thing is, when you are sincere, Right. Uh, about your calling, you're sincere about spreading the gospel, you're sincere about evangelism, uh, then you're going to do the work. Now, uh, 
this is, of course, a challenging time. Mm -hmm. uh, I know it's challenging time uh, where you have to exercise wisdom, and we've done our best to do that. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll continue to do that. Uh, but I believe that the church uh, proper is uh, being efficient in utilizing the resources that we had. What if we were in a pandemic in 1920? We wow. wouldn't have Zoom. We wouldn't have cell phones. We would not mm -hmm. have, uh, I don't want to say iPads. We wouldn't have Android tablets. Well, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> don't say that because the pastor, not the pastor. The president say, uh-uh, I, I don't want well, to. Well, well, you know, but you, you, every night, but every now and then all of us need some help. And he he was having a challenge. Pastor Sampson was having a challenge saying it, but I said for him, iPad. <laughs> he, he was. It's, uh, he, he was having <laughs> it's an ongoing <laughs> joke. Listen, listen, it's an ongoing joke in the uh, convention. We have yeah. one pastor, one, yeah. one, one pastor. One. In the entire United States, yes, of the America. including Jamaica, <laughs> Africa, pa all uh, all of our four mission fields, one pastor, uh, uh -huh. Dr. Delbert Brown, my good friend, he he still has a BlackBerry. That's you right. know what? I'm I'm gonna be honest with you now. I I I have a BlackBerry myself because it's it's kind of like you got to pull out what's what's you know. President, I'm pretty sure you have a favorite Bible that you that you love to use, and you just got to go back to it. But you know that that's just how it is. As long as it get the job done. Well, I called uh, Pastor Brown, Reverend Blackberry. So now <laughs> you sister Blackberry. <laughs> well, thank you. I pray. Do I get baptized? Uh, when, when you get an upgrade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, so I mean, I, you know, yeah, we 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 have to do that. But you know what? I mean, it, it is so good that we're able to sit here in yes. the middle of what some people, now li listen to this very, very well, that are, that, that don't believe, that have not yes. been introduced, that yes. don't understand. They're thinking that this is the end, but it is just really the beginning. So now you have I have never seen so many churches pop up and we got pop up churches all, I'm talking about people are asking for money online and all of these things. So how honest, how honest do you think that we all, you know, coming from where you all are at, how honest do you actually think that we could be in a time such as this when we're asking people to, you know, send, send your offering or, or pay your tithes online or still be a part of, the giving process how you know how would we actually you know rule rule that out you know well i think you know those of us who are christians and who are committed to the cause of christianity mm -hmm. uh, just like we were honest before the pandemic i think we will be as honest or more honest now because one thing about it now we have to depend on the lord a, a whole yeah. lot more than we were before and that that yes. brings a sense of seriousness that might not have been there before. I hear a lot uh, of us, we're talking about uh, social distancing. I've actually been promoting physical distancing because okay. socially we need to be getting closer to each other, yeah. even though we are not close physically. <laughs> and, but in, in the energy we use to be physically distant, we yeah. can also use that same energy to become spiritually closer to the Lord because right. the Lord tells us in James 4 and 8, you draw near to me and I will draw I, near to you. So this is right. time, that's even right. though we're getting away from each other physically, we can get closer to the Lord spiritually. Wow, that's amazing. And so, and so Reverend, let, let, let me ask you a question. Now, um, here in Houston, of course, you know, um, Easter Sunday, it just passed. And so as believers, and you know, it, it's just something in us to touch and agree. We want to fellowship. It's something about us being around each other. So that, that was a particular church, uh, several churches, but one, one uh, church, um, they said that they felt that the police officers and the mayor went to the extreme. And they put you know notes on their car saying that they needed to be, um, you know, go and get tested. They needed to, you know, practice social distancing and they needed to quarantine for, for, you know, give us who still just want to come and be 
in the fellowship. What kind of advice could you give us? Well, let me say this. We're doing the best that we can. We, we've never faced this before. Uh, yes, there are some times where uh, law enforcement has, of course, uh, come to the church. Uh, I was speaking to one of our sons uh, of the house. Well, not son of the house, but one of the sons of friendship and one of the mm -hmm. sons of thunder. And uh, actually, uh, the there were undercover officers that came in and uh, asked questions of them, and uh, they misunderstood what was happening. Uh, they had less than ten people there, uh, but they still came undercover in an unmarked car. Wow! Uh, last Sunday, uh, which was Resurrection Sunday, mm -hmm. uh, we actually had service or we had worship uh, in the grocery store parking lot. And uh, the Lord uh, blessed us in a mighty good way. I'm thankful for that. The, uh, some of our members were able to see each other uh, and we were grateful for that opportunity for them to be able to uh, see each other during the last Sunday. Uh, but after the services were over, I uh, went back to the church, of course, uh, to take care of uh, quite a bit of work. And uh, lo and behold, uh, there was a police officer right there on the corner of Lockwood and Bennington. Uh, They're but, trying to come. <laughs> but, but by no They're means. They're trying to come get your pastor. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. But I think that they were heightened. Uh, we are. Right. Uh, wow. uh, they were, of course, I'm sure looking. Uh, but um, I was a bit surprised uh, to mm. see that officer just parked there. Uh, right on the corner, right on our lot. Right, <laughs> right on the edge of the, uh, uh, the church's prop. That is correct. That is right, correct. Right, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, so, yeah. Right there. So wow. I know law enforcement has to do what they need to do. About right. the token, we have to do what we have to do, and that is spread the gospel. Yes. Spread it using wisdom. So I hope that answered your question. I mean, and, and, and you, did a, you did a remarkable job. And I mean, we want to make sure that we say this, if we don't say anything else, we do understand that law enforcement has a job to do. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're encouraging everyone and we're asking everyone to practice social distancing and listen to what, you know, um, everyone has to say that, you know, from the CDC, your mayor or whatever city officials that you have, but I mean, you, you, you do know us, you know, we're gonna go. And we want to just make sure that everyone understand. And I, and I am so, I'm so blessed to have been able to be a part of so many different services. And so uh, President, what I want, you know, to pose to you is this, I mean, you have probably pre, well, no, not probably, I, I, I retract that. You have preached to the masses. You've traveled the world. How are we, well, how are you going to get people from wandering and wondering what is it we're going to do when all of this is over? I mean, because you can pop on the internet and I th there's, a, there's preaching and teaching in so many different parts of the country. Yes. So, I mean, you have some pastors that say, I may not have my two or 3,000 members when all of this is over. So, you know, can you, can you help us with that? Well, I would think that we need to think about what we're doing mm -hmm. and how many people uh, are being captured by the e-church, if you will, or the virtual church. Okay. Uh, not what Pastor Samson think, but many of us may have to prayerfully consider making sure that we never lose the e-church, that we keep the e-church mm. and we actually do some strategic planning about how to grow the e-church uh, as much as people being physically together, some of that may decrease some, but we can actually expand our borders uh, by being able to preach to more people than we're preaching to right now because of the e-church setup. I think with, you know, the internet with Facebook Live, with YouTube, you know, streaming, uh, and even we can do online giving now with uh, online platforms like Giblify, Vanco Payment, Cash App, 
there is a way to maintain a connection with people who may not physically come to the building, but they will still be a part of our church family. And we have to start looking at church different, uh, start asking questions. What happens if someone in, in Iraq wants to be a part of our fellowship on a regular basis? What do we do? We are broadcasting, they're mm -hmm. hearing the gospel, and if they're gonna practice the gospel out in the community, uh, then I think that uh, we need to do what we can to equip them. You know what, President, I wanna thank you because I mean, th this, <laughs> my next question, and, and Pastor, I'm gonna pose that to you. I mean, now you, you gotta ride on the coattail of what he just said, because we are, with the E-Church, like the President said, we're expanding and growing in places that we've never been, in different languages that we, we've we never spoken before. So, you know, what type of information or what kind of tips could you, you know, some, some type of get ready, get ready, get ready, because it's coming. It's, 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 you gotta get ready. President is ready, he going to Iraq. We, we have to get ready. So, you know, what, what can we do to get ready? Because it's here, it's on our front doorsteps. Well, I think that uh, everybody now uh, has been forced to get ready. Yes. Uh, there were some who were gradually getting on board uh, with uh, touching the uh, younger generation, if you would. Uh -huh. but not everybody, if in order to remain, uh, shall we say, relevant right now or efficient, uh -huh. let me say efficient, not relevant, efficient. Mm -hmm. Right now, you have to go and uh, have a some type of social media or YouTube type of platform. Uh, now, you can preach to some, uh, but in order to reach all, uh, uh, you have to use multiple multiple ways. Now, by no means, do am I saying that I that in present? I know it said. We're not trying to substitute the physical That's uh, right. worship, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but use it, if you would, as a supplement, uh, an add-on, uh, lanyard, if you would. That's what they mm -hmm. say in Louisiana. A little, oh, uh, lan yes. a little, little lanyard. <laughs> a, little, a little something extra. <laughs> the overflow. Overflow. And I, okay. and I think we are able to manage both. Uh, and, and so we just have more of the e-virtual church now then we mm -hmm. do the meeting in the building. Uh, mm -hmm. But we've done that before. And I think we just have to have a balance between uh, the E-Church and the actual, I guess you call it physical meeting together church. Wow. And and the, did you have something else to say, Pastor? Oh, no. Yeah, no. Okay. And, and you know what, uh, uh, Mr. President, it, it is so ironic that you say that because once we have worked on the the e-church the play it's like it, you open the door and it's here yes. and so i can say because when 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 we came um my grandmother came in 1929 and reverend john Bowie was her pastor she traveled with her pastor and so when anyone was sick the pastor would go if it's a funeral the pastor would go if you had to go to court the pastor would go and so you know that was the pastor then. Yes. So now my question with everything that's going on, I mean, you know, how, you know, easy and accessible and reachable are, do you think that, you know, the leaders are actually going to be with all of this, you know, that's getting ready to take place? Well, I just, uh, I, and I'm, I'm sorry, in the middle of your question, I heard it but I was just answering a text of a member who's in MD Anderson in Houston. Oh, wow. And she's gonna have surgery in the morning. She's arriving there now. She want me to know she's gonna, gonna be there in the morning. And I just told her that I'm praying for you and you are not alone. And mm -hmm. her reply was, thank you. No, sir, I'm not alone. Gonna be me and Jesus. Wow. And she recognized that. But yeah. I probably would have been in Houston in the morning praying for this member. I believe But you. we are communicating right now every day uh, between her and her husband and her family, and myself, some mm -hmm. sisters at the church have formed a fasting and prayer group. They're going to be on the phone praying. So it's just interesting to me, the new 
methods that people have developed over the last 30 days. They are doing things that they never thought they would do. We got a Sunday school teacher at our church that's probably nearing 70 years old. She's doing her Sunday school class, Facebook Live. She's wow. had 27 students in the class. She usually have 12 to 15. <laughs> Something is going on. And so what yes. I shared with her on the phone one day was, don't ever stop the Facebook Live phase of your class, even when we get back to the building. She's got, I think, two students in Houston that are watching her. They're part of her family, but they're listening at her now teach Sunday school because of Facebook Live. So I think the church is ever evolving mm -hmm. and expanding. We're making the adjustments and the Holy Spirit ultimately is gonna guide those who are sensitive enough to listen on what the next steps are gonna be. But I do think we need to start doing some transition planning because wow. we're gonna like transition that. back to the church. Yeah, but well, President, I, I do like that idea uh, about that virtual Sunday school class too. Uh, we are, and I, I give a uh, course, I salute uh, youth counselors at our church. I, yes. I asked the youth director to, to uh, charge them and I wanted them to provide uh, Bible stories or the yes. teachers to provide that, to do voiceover PowerPoints, to give uh, mm -hmm. stories from the Bible. And yes, we know that parents have been charged with becoming the new teacher. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and many of them realize it real quick. It's not but always they, the teacher's fault. <laughs> I want to apologize to all of the teachers, every one That's of them. That's I'm right. Sorry. Yeah. And I think about, you know, the last, I don't know, three or four Sundays, I've been preaching from my living room to my congregation. Wow. But I'm preaching as far as those who are physically present to my 26-year-old and 30-year-old daughter and my wife. Yeah. You standing, conducting worship to the whole church. And those are the three people that are seated in front. Of, and it's happening in my home. And think wow. about it, Pastor. The early church started in the homes. In the home, they, that's they right. Went, they went from house to house. And right. even though we may not be physically doing it that way, but with the virtual church, the e-church, we are going back to the original model. And I really believe that the church was at her best at her birth. Wow. Yes. So some of those principles and techniques are coming back. We just have technology that enhances it in a new way. President, wow. let me ask you this. So yes. does, that, does that require, see for years, uh, my father has taught that the man leaves the home. Uh, yeah. the, the man's proper place in marriage is in leadership. Yes. And I know as a society, we have deviated from that. Mm -hmm. But you just hit something real key, and that is if, if, if the true worship has to come from the head of the house. Yes. yes. Can, you, can you just deal a little bit with that? And deal well, I, I think I think it's so important, and it's about biblical roles. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not always about which subject is more important, whether it be the man, the woman, or the children, but it's what is our biblical role. And as men, that is our role to lead and to teach our families, although we want to lead them without teaching them. Many mm -hmm. of us are having the opportunities. I had someone say, well, what happens if the internet goes out? I say, we're going to have uh, prepared a structure where they can have Bible study in their homes. I'm getting that ready now in case the Bible, uh, the internet goes out. Mm -hmm. the, the brothers or the leaders of the home can lead Bible study on Sunday morning in their home from a handout that we're going to provide to them. And they're going to keep that in reserve. If it happens, pick the sheet up and go at it. Because we got to realize that your families are important. And, wow. and it amazes me how my family has adjusted in participating and supporting my ministry to help me do it. I stand up there and preach, but my daughter is the engineer. Yeah. She came wow. up with new software and the other one is doing something. My wife, and you know what? Everybody's on time for church now. <laughs> no. We, we all in the same little space, so we all together. On. Everybody yes. is on time. And you know yes. what? I, I, I want to say to you, president and, and you, pastor, I commend you guys because these are trying times right now. And so like you, like you said, uh, president, that 
you know, the church was, you know, she was at her best at her birth. And I'm, you know, I can just, when it started in the living room, our hearts were so, you know, our hearts were pure. We yes. didn't have anything. Whoever was there, they were there and we would preach it down. Like it was, you know, the three was 3000, you know, and I remember, you know, the, uh, I took communion here myself and I was like, well, I don't have the, the little cups and crackers and stuff, you know, that they have at the church. So I just got me some bread, you know, because I, I still, you, you know, some, we're uh, still a part juice. of that. I hope you had grape juice. Grape it, juice. It, 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 it was, it was that color. It was great. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Lord, she had, coming for me. Sound like she had some colored juice. You said. Yeah, I, well, you know, Pat, we, we all have traveled <laughs> down that road before, but God turned me around while it's turning time. But I just want to, you know, say I take my hat off to you all. And I hope and I pray that Wherever God is taking us, we're getting ready to go into a direction that we have been waiting to go in. But sometimes, you know, we need that push. Yes. We, and you know, we, that's, been, that's been such a gap between the millennials, the baby uh, boomers, and the older generations. Uh -huh. But this situation is bringing us together because where the yes. baby boomers and the older generations may not know about technology, I'm seeing our churches are coming together where the young people are stepping up and they are working the technology for the rest of us. So and we are almost being forced to work together, even though we were not working that close together before. The millennials are stepping up. That You know what? And I'm glad that you said that, uh, uh, Mr. President. Hold, hold that thought. Now, now, Pastor, I know that, you know, the God me over that great Jehovah, you know, that that's grandma, the old 100. You know, God, that, that's grandmother. But now we got the Todd tribute. Wait, wait, wait got, do that again. God, me, I wish, over. I wish, I, I, wish I had See, that's my grandmother's favorite song. That's song too. I wish I had one of our diggers on here to lift that me to him, but it ain't show you how to get it. <laughs> Let's show you how to get it. So, you you know, that, that's my grandmother's rendition on Sunday morning to get us together. But with that being said, so you have, you, you, you know, you have the generation that, that the older generation, then you have the new millennials that's coming in and, you know, the rap and, you know, their, their praise and all, you know, how do we think that we're going to be able to mesh all of this together? <clears throat> well, I think that it, it's well, uh, planned out by the pastor of the church. Okay. The pastor has to have a good relationship with the director of music ministry or the uh -huh. of music director, whatever you want to call them. Uh -huh. and if you have a balance, and this is something that uh, was, was taught to me by uh -huh. being a musician, but also being a student of my, 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 my pastor. Mm -hmm. And that was, he always had balance in, 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 on, the, on the, worship, uh, the worship guy. Mm -hmm. So we may start off with devotion, all right, yeah. with, with no music yeah. and lift those meter hymns. But then we would transcend, transcend into a hymn, okay? And then maybe the choir would sing a Kirk Franklin song, if yeah. you would, or a John P. Key song, which was contemporary then, of course. Uh, now, you know, after talking to some of the, uh, <laughs> the music, uh, uh, the musicians out there now, now John P. Key is old school. He's Kirk old school. Old school. Uh, but, but I think even now in our worship flow, we have a balance. Uh, there's mm -hmm. The 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 the, the meet of him. We sing, still sing. God, we owe thy great Jehovah. I, I love it. I'll pick. We'll pitch it on the street for street yeah. service. Yeah. Uh, and then, but we'll also have some 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 music. Uh, our uh, youth youth director, uh, which we call our YBs, uh, uh, he he helps us out a little bit. Gives them some songs that are a little bit more upbeat, so they can mm -hmm. be a little bit more engaged in yes. the song, if you will. So I think balance is key. I'm just going to go back to yeah. that. 
Yeah, yeah, and I think, you know, it helps us to learn to appreciate music when we have a variety uh, yes. in the back that pastors talked about. I remember when I first became a student at McNeese State University here in Lake Charles, that one of the courses that I took as an elective was music appreciation. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, it wasn't the church music, but yeah, yeah. You know, for me, for mm -hmm. me to come from the neighborhood I came from, and I had to sit down, past and look at Bach, listen at Bach and Beethoven, and all Chopin. those guys. Yeah, and and be able to pick out the different instruments in the orchestra to know what was playing, mm -hmm. and I had to write it, turn it in. It got to a point where I started liking listening to orchestra. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I get my radio and turn it and just listen to orchestras play because I learned how to appreciate it, even though it wasn't my top preference. I wow. learned to appreciate And I think in the church, people will appreciate the balance that Pastor talked about because yeah. there's something for everyone, but ultimately all of it is sung unto the Lord. Yes. And, and you were gonna say something, Pastor? I just agree with Brother Fred then. On the, on the balance. On the balance. For the, Lord, the part that it's for the Lord. It's for the Lord. It, 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 it is yeah. for him. And I, I, I really do believe that at this particular point in time, we are, we as a society, no matter what your, uh, your beliefs or no matter what your background is, I think that we are beginning to peel off all of the layers that we have had over the years about Christianity about, you know, color, race, gender, you know, sexual orientation, and just beginning to really see the God in each and every one of us, because this is what we're going to need in order to be able to transcend. And, you know, I, I want to ask you, uh, uh, Mr. President, um, <clears throat> what's your thoughts about this? I have a, I got a, a Facebook inbox the other day and a friend of mine, her, her mother had passed away. Yes. And so now we have a church that has 22 members that have passed, well, that had made the transition, you know, within this COVID-19. And so now, you know, you know how we are. We want to you know, have our funeral. We want to be able to, you know, fraternize and be together. What what type of, you know, inspiration could you give those who have found themselves in bereavement, but just really cannot do it the traditional way? Well, I think what we should think of at this time is the life that that person lived and the connection mm -hmm. and life that we live with them. Mm -hmm. and put more focus on that because that's a much longer period than mm -hmm. any funeral would be anyway. Why, uh, why? And understand that we're living in some times when even if that person was alive and they love you, they would tell you it is not a good thing for us to congregate together to take the risk of having some more funerals. Wow. And so, you know, spend some time. I know one family, uh, their mother passed away. And um, uh, that night, mm -hmm. the children all got together the night before. They were gonna go to the cemetery and they sat around in the house and just sang and talked mm -hmm. about them. So they actually <laughs> had that little therapy or that little time of, 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 of worship and that time of reflection upon their parent. And then the mm -hmm. next day they went to the cemetery. So we just have to make the adjustment. We got to make the shift. And, and I mean, I, I really, I understand that. And now pastor, what, what the president just said, it seemed like right now, the spirit, the Holy Spirit, touching and agreeing, not even being in the, mm, I love you, Lord, I will, not even being in the same place. Yes. It is getting, you know, we're feeling that kinetic energy. We're feeling, we, 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 you know, we're feeling the Holy Spirit now. So, I mean, you know, what what's your take on that? Well, uh, I'm a firm believer that the Holy Spirit is always there, always will be there. Yeah. Uh, I, I do believe that the Holy Spirit manifests himself uh, at different <clears throat> times. Mm -hmm. um, and, and with that being said, uh, I believe that there are preachers who are 
preaching the gospel and the Holy Spirit is manifesting himself within them. Mm -hmm, These mm -hmm. pastors have been preaching to five people, to seven to 10 people. Yes, like yes. They have been preaching to someone who would fill up NRG Stadium or the Superdome or any other. They're not holding back. They understand right. even if they're in their homes <clears throat> or in their fellowship halls, in their sanctuaries, <clears throat> these pastors have been preaching the uncompromising gospel. And, and what right. I said, let me tell you what happened last week. And this is something that's interesting. I, I We had the seven sayings of an East E worship. And these preachers were, these were many of these preachers. It was their first time preaching online because they were all associate ministers. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and most of them, of course, were, were associate ministers from, from our church, but we did have a few guests too. I share with them that as I, I prior to us going live, I share with them, I said, uh, in essence, you, you, you've been called to preach. And the reality is you've preached to yourself all uh, many times. Many. That's what I just That's were recording. Right. <laughs> yep. and, and you know, many. even and even for the National Baptist Convention, we just uh, legally and officially canceled our June. 2020 meeting in Louisville, Kentucky today. Mm -hmm. I had a meeting right before we got on with the executive committee of the board director making a recommendation and we'd already received the uh, communication. But we're gonna, we're, we're now developing uh, something. I don't know if you could see it on that screen if I do this. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Not, but it's called the NBCA e-Congress. We're working wow. on developing a, a platform whereby we can do a virtual Congress. There still can be some teaching and training going on from the National Convention, even though we will not be physically together. And this right. really plays into our strategic plan of making greater use of technology, which right. will cut some of the expense that some people can't afford anyway to come to hear the type of teaching and preaching that we will have. And now let mm -hmm. me also, and I didn't say this up front and I meant to do it, that Pastor F.D. Sampson Jr. has had a lot to do with the National Baptist Convention of America, uh, getting into technology as it relates to broadcasting, our worship service and other sessions. Mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of fact, the network, I think that my church is on past, I think is the one you directed them to, uh, okay. the streaming network. And so it is amazing that we are, he asked me to be on here tonight. We never uh -huh. discussed that he was the one got me into a lot of this social media and yeah. streaming and all that as it relates to the, to the convention. But I think we were preparing for it, but we got pushed into full bloom now. Uh, right. And so even our convention uh, is going to be stronger. Uh, we had a prayer meeting last, uh, what, Good Friday at noon. Uh, I think Pastor, it was unbelievable. Yeah. Led by Pastor Roy Brackens of Fort Worth, Texas. And Pastor Roy Brackens, since September 2014, has called me and prayed with me every Wednesday. And he has not missed a Wednesday yet since wow. September 2014. But this past Good Friday, uh, we had several pastors to lead various prayers. But then when everybody was opened up and, and unmuted and we all prayed, I don't know if our convention ever had a prayer meeting like we had last Friday. Wow. So wow. it's just a lot of new things are on the horizon. This Saturday morning, we're going to have the first uh, uh, prayer, uh, what we calling it, a um, e-prayer and a virtual coffee with the pastor, with the men of the church. So I'm asking all the men, we're trying to get get on Zoom, pastor, because we've been doing it on telephone. We're going to do it on Zoom, and we're going to have our so coffee. We can and we're going to be drinking coffee, and men are going to be praying. It be, it's going to be our little call, virtual coffee shop, but it's going to be a and time of prayer. And I have not in years had that special time with just the men of the church that pastor talked about earlier. I'll uh -huh. be able to give a little inspirational challenge and have men. When you can get men to pray in church and men to pray for the church and for each other, it has to change our family. Yes. And, yes. and I, as a pastor, have been pushed into this by this pandemic. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't probably be having that type prayer meeting Saturday morning if it wasn't no. for this. But we are finding mm -hmm. ways to connect and, and, and remain in touch with one another. So 
I'm excited about the good that's going to come out of something that's been destructive. And you know what? Go, go ahead. President, that yes. is a great idea. Would you also just talk a little bit about, I know we're running out of time, but the right. uh, boot camp, the men's boot camp that mm -hmm. we push from the national level. Yes. The pastor, Darrell Webster of the Emanuel Baptist Church uh, of Indianapolis, Indiana, uh, came up with this boot camp model uh, where he has really been um, pushing this idea of the importance of men's role in the home, in the church, and in the community. Mm -hmm. uh, he's meet, met with men like five o'clock in the morning. Uh, he, he does it sometimes for like two weeks at a time, every day at 5 a.m. in the morning. And just teaching the biblical principles, principles that are directed toward the role of men in their home, in their church, and in their community. And it's been dynamic. And now we're going to get an opportunity, Pastor Samson, to have a virtual boot camp at some point. <clears throat> I talked to him the other week. We can get up in the morning and get on Zoom and let him do the thing that he's doing with his men at his church. He's going to be able to reach more brothers. Right. We're going to pay for the platform so that we can have as many brothers that want to be a part of that, that pastors would direct them to and have a men's boot camp. And let me tell you, our communities are going to be different. When mm -hmm. we get men who realize that it's important for them to go into schools and spend time with our children, mm -hmm. spend time with their children and their families at home and do the type of outreach that shows the love of Jesus, mm -hmm. it's amazing. Did you get your answer, Pastor? No, go ahead. No. <laughs> I, it's, it's amazing. What I what I what I love is just like you said, COVID-19 is something that has been both a blessing and a curse. Have we lost lives? Yes, we have. We've lost a lot of lives. And but have we gained lives and souls? Yes, we have because we have more people leaning and dependent on God's word now more so than ever. And I believe in my heart that, you know, with us having to go to technology and, you know, with, you know, pastor, you know, putting up new networks and stuff all over everywhere, you know, we're going to be, we're going to be okay. And I know that, that we're running out of time, but I just want to tell, um, <coughs> tell you, um, Mr. President, I want to thank you, and I want to thank you for just covering YouTube, Pastor, about the um, effectiveness that you know the church, um, the church has played a role in. How efficient that we're going to be, how honest we're going to be in a time like this, especially when it comes to our expanding and our growing, and being able to be easy to reach to. You know, like the young lady that's at MD Anderson right now, when you really yes. want to be easy to reach, she has yes. access to her pastor. She didn't have to go through her pastor's pastor's pastor. She, you know, yeah. you made sure that you were easy to reach. And lastly, and uh, we're going to wrap it up, the completion of this whole thing. So, you know, once once we come out of this pandemic, where do you all see the church? The body, where do you all see the body? President, I, why do you see the body? I will see the church all over the world, ministering every day, 24 hours of ministering because there are gonna be people uh, that's gonna be preaching and teaching and discipling, uh, new members classes. Some of our Baptist churches couldn't get our people to certain times to meet at the church. We can do them on Zoom. It's just gonna be an amazing day. I'm looking forward to all the great things that God is gonna do through the church. We talk about it sometime and I know that our primary aim as a church is not to be saying we are trying to advertise, but let mm -hmm. me tell you, the man who does not advertise is no better than the man who blinks in the dark. Nobody knows it but him. And with social <laughs> media, with social media, we're gonna be advertising our Christ. He told us to lift him up. And that's I, didn't know, I didn't know 36 years ago when I became the pastor of my home church, I didn't know anything about Facebook and Twitter and, and st streaming and all of this. But these are marvelous tools that yes. we can use to get the gospel of Jesus to every corner of the earth. We're mm -hmm. going to be on 
on a TV station in Liberia because they're going to be pastors like Pastor F.D. Sampson Jr. I've been trying to get uh, some videos, uh, Pastor Sampson, of different pastors through our foreign mission board. Oh, I'm going to get with you. I got the tape something. We got a lot of stuff out there now. I'm going to just take it off Facebook and send it over there. And we're going to be able to help train and teach young preachers and pastors and others way in a country uh, in Africa, in Liberia and other places. So this is a marvelous day, a marvelous time for the church. In the midst of all the tragedy, I'm excited about the good that God is bringing out of it. Uh, and, and I just give him praise and glory that I'm still alive at this time to see what God is getting ready to do. I know. Thank you for that, Mr. President. And Pastor, the Lord, they go with the mask. He done, the COVID-57 mask. When, he I, done when, I get out, when I get out virtual church, I may go out there and see somebody. So yeah. Are you, you, practice. You, you, got, you got to yeah. practice social distancing. You got and to practice. Written, and and yeah. written on my faith, hope, and love. That's what's written on it. That's so what's written on that. As you make these masks, put a little a uh, Bible verse or something on it. Yes, sir. So we'll get the gospel out. That's yes. why it's so ironic that you say that because I do I do have some biblical printed mater uh, material. Would you, is, you know I what, had, Pastor? I had three masks yesterday. I had one that my, my auntie made, one that my mom <laughs> brought me, one that my wife brought me. I had three masks yesterday. I was covered. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody yeah. wants you to be safe. So, Pastor, we're going to throw it over to you because we know we're running out of time. You know, after all of this is over, what, what's your completion? And it's, and you know what? It's our completion, God's completion. Well, I see now that we're, we're actually in revival. I think yes. we are in revival right yeah. now. Yes. Okay. And, uh, what I see out of this is also not only the saints being revived, but I see that those who are lost are coming to Christ. I said something yesterday in a message. I said that there are more people who are dying spiritually than there are dying physically. Yes. But I do believe that there will be more who will come to Christ. Yes. Come to him. I believe also that there will be more of a commitment to Christ. Mm -hmm. and willingness to serve him, or wherever that may be. I also believe that there are some who were running from preaching the gospel yes. before this. Yeah. But after this, and in the midst of this, they're going to surrender to God's call. That, that's what I see. That's, that's the complete. I, I see the church of God continuing to march. I wow. see continuing to do great things in kingdom development, kingdom enrichment. I see us continuing to bless God in a mighty good way and recognizing him for who he is. Wow, an yes. amazing thing. And, and an amazing. Pastor, I want to personally thank you and let you know I was honored uh, to be invited to be tonight yes, with you me. and your church family uh, and Sister Blackberry and all the others. <laughs> uh, I, I really appreciate this time together and look forward to doing this sometime. Uh, when I get my Zoom going at my church, I'm going to Zoom you in and let you talk. <laughs> zoom, you Zoom, much. Zoom, Zoom. You know yeah. what? <laughs> I, want to th I want to thank you too, Pastor, for allowing me to be a part of, you know, this magnificent hour. And you know what, Mr. President, I, I really cannot wait to meet you in person. I, I love your spirit. I love what you're doing. And uh, I think that, you know, God is going to lead us in different, but yet the same, the same directions. And Pastor, you stay strong. And you know what? He who expects nothing, they're never disappointed. That's my yes. thought. And I sign off. NBCA is at your service. All yes. right. This is, let me say this. Let me say this. <laughs> Our president is a, a humble man. Very. Of God. Very. And he is doing some great things for small churches, mm -hmm. medium-sized churches, large churches, mm -hmm. pastors who are popular, pastors who are not so popular. Mm -hmm. He has provided uh, a, a, a way for them to network. Just as an example, let me just share this, and I want to put this out there. He, he, before all of this happened, you remember 
there's a there's a, a Christian bookstore. I won't name the bookstore, but mm -hmm. they sold uh, the Lord's Supper, grape juice, and uh, unleavened bread, if you will. That one of the things our president did years ago, years ago, was mm -hmm. to avoid the middleman, where he brought that distributor to our every meeting, and mm -hmm. we were able, every church that wanted to was able to purchase uh, the Lord's Supper uh, beverage and uh, bread. Mm -hmm. and not only that, but receive at a discount, but not only that, if we had a certain amount of churches who bought them, that entity gave into our, uh, our uh, what was it? The board- college and, college and seminary board, yes. Yeah. Wow. College, I mean, just, just things like that. Um, uh, supplies before, there was a big push of buying supplies in the stores. A president networked with companies and we had, if you would, our own Costco, our own Sam's Wholesale. Yes. Where churches could go direct and buy wholesale. Uh, our president has done a great job at making sure that we ministered to everybody. And that's just Beautiful. a couple of things that he has done. I could go on and on, but uh, he is very humble. Uh, he won't talk a lot about it tonight. He didn't talk a lot about it tonight, but I wanted us to know how relevant the National Baptist Convention International Incorporated is. And uh, we're thankful for his leadership as well as his cabinet mm -hmm. as they continue to do uh, an outstanding job. And we are super proud. We are hippopotamus yes. happy. We are elephant excited to oh, be God. part of uh, the oldest Yes. The oldest, and I said it, right. you can quote yes. me, the oldest That's National right. Baptist Convention in the United States of America. Wow. That's right. And, and let, me just, uh, let me share one closing remark. I got on a plane in Houston to go to Tampa, Florida a couple of months ago to a National Baptist meeting. I got my ticket late. There were no more first class seats left. Mm. And I passed up Pastor Sampson in first class. He said, Prez, where are you going? I said, I'm going to my seat. He said, you can't sit back there. You need to sit here. I said, oh, no. So I went and sat back there and coached. After a while, he sent two of the flight attendants to fetch me. He yeah. got up, gave me his first class seat that he paid for. Yes. And he was sat in coach. That is just amazing when you have somebody with that spirit. And I hope yes. that friendship really know and appreciate what the Lord has done in blessing them with the, what, you're the sixth pastor? Yes, sir. The sixth, the sixth pastor. <laughs> they were blessed with the fifth pastor and they are blessed with the sixth pastor. Yes. Well, I'm happy. I had a wonderful time and I cannot wait. And if you ever see me on the bus and you're on the plane, please give me your seat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> with that mask on, President. Listen. With that mask on. I I'll see you guys to... later. I want y'all to wear these gloves too. Y'all wear these gloves. All right. All right. Okay. God Bye. bless you. In Georgia, y'all be blessed in a mighty good way. You too, Pastor. All right. Bye-bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.